hello and welcome to this week's angling blog um, today you join me on the banks of the canal with Mark from Cheshire Particle and his brother Craig um, it's the third night session that we've done together um, the first one which I'll put at the top now um, was when I was just targeting bream on the method feeders and um, Mark was showing how he avoids the bream and just targets the carp um, the second one we went to a different area and uh, after seeing that carp that, that Mark caught um, I wanted to try and catch one myself and tailor my approach. So on that video you see me use a pink pop-up. Um, today, I've been giving a bit of thought to it. And, you know, I, I'm trying to tailor my approach now to try and catch one of these elusive canal carp. Um, and what I'll do in the next little bit of the video is I'll go into detail about my thought process and, and what we've done. And it also goes to the baiting up. So earlier this week, it's Friday night now, on Wednesday night I think it was, we caught the canal and baited up. This time, as you've probably heard me talk about just then, I'm more aimed at carp on one of the rods. So as you can see, the baiting approach, taking on board what Mark said, is about attraction. So I've took away the pellets, and I'll talk more about the reasons for them two baits here, back on the clip. But for baiting up on the Wednesday night, I'm going to put half a kilo of corn on each spot and just a few of the hook baits that I'm going to be fishing with tonight. So let's get back onto the bank on the night of the session. Right, so as you can see there, um, from the original session we did, um, where the mix was, uh, you know, it had um, hemp and, and pellet in it, the pellet's been completely taken away. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is, you know, reduce the amount of bream that I catch. Um, I think you're always going to catch them but um, try and reduce it and pellet is the biggest attractor of them so as you can see in that baiting up there it was just boily and it was corn um, and learning from what Mark said about um, the first baiting up is to attract fish in the area just to get fish used to bait being on them spots where you're fishing so on that session I put you know, a little, you know I think it was a kilo of corn and a couple of handfuls of boilies on the two spots um, we're, now, we're on the night of the session now and what we'll have a look at now is the two um, rigs that I've gone with and the baits that I'm going to be using and why. Right, so the rig that I'm going to be using for the boilie, got my ESP tungsten leader so that it pins it down to the bottom. Um, a two ounce lead, obviously got the, the lead clip, um, a quick change um, ESP swivel. so. That just fits into there with enough tension to hold it so you get the bolt effect and then so you can change the rig easy in the night it's a quick put the loop over um it's got obviously that to stop the and um, to kick the line away from the lead so it sits on the bottom about a six inch hook length and a simple knotless knot to a hair rig boily um the principles of it are quite simply I want the bait to be fishing on the bottom and um, when I cast it in the only thing I want with the bait is that it's fishing so that's going to sit on the bottom like that and you know the carp sucks it up hits the lead and I'm a great believer in in simplicity um, and to be honest with you I, I'm not I don't do a lot of carping as you see I do the method feeders I don't tie many rigs and Let's just see how we do on this simple, basic rig that I can tie. There's not many other rigs that I can tie, um, carp-wise. But yeah, that's the rig that I'm going to be putting out for the um, boiling rod. For those that are new to the channel, um, the, what the regulars will have seen this hundreds of times. ESP tungsten leader down to a... Preston 45 gram method feeder basically load that with pellets a quick change corum bead a 4 inch chunk length of 10 pound line because obviously it's got the potential to catch a carp so you've got to have a strong tackle and it'll catch the bream the, I've caught loads of bream on it and then that's just a knotless knot and on the end of that we'll go a juice dumbbell so that's the two rigs that I'll be casting out that one will be going down the edge over um, a bed of corn as you've just seen and they're the only pellets that are going to go in the swim to try and reduce the bream and um, catch the odd one but give it the best potential to catch a carp 
and then obviously the other rig is simple knotless knot for the pony rod. Right, so that's the, the rigs and the bait that I'm going with and the thought process behind it. And like I always say, you've got to have a method to your madness. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the method reader approach will pick me up some bream during the night. Um, I'm hoping um, that the, the tiger nut, um, you know, does the same um, similar job than what Mark does and uh, deters the bream and gives me a chance to, you know, build a swim targeted at, at catching a carp. And um, that is the ultimate goal with it. Um, we've had some good sessions for the bream. Um, the method feeder approach will obviously catch the odd bream, I reckon. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed that um, that, that tiger nut approach with just the corn on the top, um, getting rid of the pellet completely, and that gives that, that spot a chance to just sit and be a carp line. Um, and anything that and only carp that come in feed on it, and the bream leave it alone and we might get a couple of bream, worst case scenario hopefully we get a couple of bream for the blog on the method feeder line and who knows we've caught a lot of carp on that rig as well haven't we on our mother waters and there's definitely something in that trap that works um, so it's, it's always going to be part of my, my repertoire I've got confidence in it the session ahead um, is going to be slightly different than the other ones the other ones have been very warm um, certainly in the 20s 20 degrees up and then warm evenings and cool at night but not freezing um, it's a Friday night and we've had some scorching hot weather the last couple of days and they've actually given thunderstorms tonight so I imagine tonight's going to be a very different day under the back under the um, under the shelter um, certainly different than the last ones the last ones have been quite a pleasant experience um, if the rain that they forecast does arrive and they give it heavy and thunderstorms so we'll be in for quite um, an eventful time on the bank so now what I'm going to do is I think we're just about to order some tea and we're gonna get the rods out sit back and fingers crossed we'll get some fish on the bank tonight Like I said, um, tonight a very different night altogether. Um, the wind's up a little bit and there's a rustle in the trees. A far cry from them boiling up bank holidays in the last blogs. Right, so it's getting on for half past nine now, and we're right in the middle of summer. As you can see, the sky's still a bit clear, but everything's quieting down a bit. Um, we've had a bit of cloud co cover come over and now it's just cleared but you can still see the rustle in the trees um, the road never really stops but it just falls into the background at times and everything's just, just quieting down everyone's got the rods in and from now till midnight and it goes dark you just get that air of anticipation and with a carp rod out with a good baited spot on fingers crossed that Mr Carp comes out to play because we have seen one or two moving about tonight so yeah fingers crossed right so that's where I'll be staying this evening um, got my, all my bait and my bucket at the back of me there out the way bed chair and a blanket because it does get cold on the bank surprisingly I, don't, I didn't expect it to be so in summer and uh, my little girl sent me off on her way with her Olaf pillow and yeah let's hope it brings us some good luck this evening but yeah super carpy right so there's the first beam of the night just under five pound and it's come on a tiger up boily which isn't a great start really i wanted to target the carp on that rod and it seems to be that these fish are quite partial to a tiger nut boily so let's get him back and get the rod back out second beam of the night that's come on the inside rod on the method feeder just as i was dropping off decided to wake me up let's get it back Bream number three and two one to the tiger nut boily. 
I think it's back to the drawing board with that one. Right, so it's half past three in the morning. We've got four bream so far on the bank. Um, it is disappointing that two have come on, on the tiger nut rod. Um, I'm not going to lie. When As you seen at the start of the video, when I was talking about the, the setup, um, I had high hopes for it. Do you know what I mean? I thought, in my head, the thought process was that tiger nuts that Mark had worked for his fish would then be transferable over to a boilie, which would be easier for me to... to um, to use being quite new to carping um, one thing it has shown is the rig works that all the beam have been nailed in the in the bottom of the mouth so I'm confident that if a carp did pick up that rig it would, would catch it but um, the fact that it still catches the bream is, is a bit disappointing I just thought that rod would completely disregard the bream the, um, the, cat, the bream completely um, but it has slowed them down the method feeder was getting um, what were we getting seven seven bream a night and we're on we're on four over the two rods and it's been very rare that both rods have, have caught fish so yeah it's half past three in the morning both rods are back out again and i'm gonna retreat back into my little shelter and try and get a bit of sleep and um, one thing i have got into the routine of on these sessions is being ready for bite time now six o'clock in the morning um is is bite time it seems and um, it's when mark had his carp on the last session so what i'm doing is i've just put that rod back in it's uh, about quarter to four in the morning and i'm just going to put a handful of boilies over the carp rod on the far bank um just so this, i know there's some bait out there for that first light um bite time so let's get this bit of bait in right so on the on the night fishing sessions one part that's becoming really enjoyable for me is the start of the dawn chorus um I'm out early on the bank, as you all know, but I'm normally travelling to the venue at that time. And although there is a road right next to us here, you get to hear that dawn chorus start. And if the road just goes quiet for a second, you'll be able to share that moment with me. So, here we go. And as I say, you're always going to get the road in the background, but when you're in that shelter, you just don't really hear the road. It goes, disappears, and all you hear is the birds singing. And from three o'clock till six, it's the best background music in the world. Right, it's 20 to five in the morning, and the rod has just screamed off. And I mean, Screamed off, and there we go. Uh, I think she was just over 17 pounds on the scales, and she nearly pulled the other rod off the rest as she tore it off on that outside rod. Come on, the um, the tiger nut boily um, on the far bank that's been you know had a couple of bream in the night, um, but come good. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Because I'm shaking a bit now. Because <laughs> after the oh, after Bream, the run was something else. But yeah, a lovely fish, just over 17 pound. I'm just going to get a couple of photos of her. Yeah, my first ever canal carp, and one to remember. Let's get a couple of pictures and get her back. Right, so it's time to let her go. Back you go, girl. Thank you very much. Happy days. Right, so that fish has gone back now. Um, still shaking and all hot and bothered. Um, so what happened? Um, I did the piece on the blog where I said about catching the four, four bream. Um, two on the on the tiger nut rod and um, two on the, the method feeder and um, at that stage like I said on the video was I didn't think um, my plan was working 
Um, I expected the tiger nuts to pick out just carp. I didn't expect to get any bites on it. So when I started picking up bream, um, started to think maybe I'd got it, I'd got it wrong. Um, I had another bream just after the um, the piece that I did, and I'll put that on the, the screen now. So this bream come probably 10 seconds, well, a couple of minutes before the, the carp. So this bream I caught just before the carp. Right, so I'll literally put that, that bream back, um, reset the rod on the method feeder, and I was thinking about resetting the, the far bank rod on the um, the boilie. I was thinking, what you know, get the rod in position. Um, I'd already put a bit of bait out, and I thought, well, make sure it's fishing for bite time around six o'clock. Uh, and I sat down. I sat down for about two or three minutes, and then the rod, the left hand rod, absolutely screamed off. Um, it literally knocked the right hand rod off the vest it was so violent was to take um straight to the rod it was peeling line off it was heading down the canal um and then about 20 30 yards in the distance it it topped it come up in the water and i could see straight away it was a nice carp um and then in the the morning light me and mark's brother craig um we stood there as this this car just went up and down the canal and the rod hooped over um, at that stage get, picking the camera up was the last thought on my mind uh, and then it come up in the water and turned and went again and I thought just don't come off please don't come off and then it come under my margin up in the water and Craig thankfully netted it first time for me and yeah more than made up with that fish uh, I think it was just over 17 pound when we took the sling off and a capture I, I won't forget um, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna have a cup of tea a cup of coffee and sit down and what I'll do is gather my thoughts and we'll have a bit of a we'll about two or three hours of the session left really and we are right in bite time it's about six o'clock in the morning now so there's still a chance of another fish so we will have a cup of coffee a bit of a chill out and then I'll catch us all in a minute Here we go Celebratory brew. Cheers. Right, so that's the session come to an end now. It's eight o'clock on the Saturday morning, and after that carp, showing how hard this venue is, nothing happened. Um, how you go from, um, like we've, we've seen a lot of carp over this weekend on the top in the area, um, and how you go from green, green, green carp to four hours of nothing. And that's the challenge of the canal. Super made up with that carp. Um, still, a couple of hours later, still, you know, tingling and yeah, exciting stuff. Seeing that rod hoop right over um, and line shooting down the canal and me chasing after it with the rod. I only wish I'd have remembered to pass the the camera for someone to record it, but I guess their memories will stay with myself, um, and I certainly won't be forgetting them. Um, what I would like to say at the end of the video is um, a big thank you to Mark and Craig. Um, they've been fantastic on the sessions on the bank. Um, Mark especially, uh, he's helped me out no end um, and I can't thank him enough. Uh, all the way through this, when I've said to him I wanted to start targeting the carp, he, he's gone through the processes with me. He's a, he is a proper carp angler, the carp fishing is his type of fishing and the little tweaks the baiting up how much bait to put in what type of bait to put in um has really helped me and then with the rigs as well as i say you've seen me do a lot of method feeder fishing on the channel i'm not a big carp guy anyone who watches the channel a lot it's easy to catch a few carp but i do it with a method feeder so this transition over to um waiting for carp for a couple of days you know for an evening or a day or two like on the last ones is new to me and his help has been invaluable and I certainly wouldn't have caught that fish without him. Um, it's been hard at times, I've struggled with the length of the sessions and um, getting my head round, you know, not putting more bait in, just sitting and waiting and be confident that the trap's set and with that Mark's experience has, has been invaluable, you know, has been invaluable for me and 
I can't thank him enough. So thank you very much, mate. I really do appreciate it. And I am, of course, I've said that to him on the bank. Um, that is the end of the session now. Um, we'll be out again, no doubt, for Carp in the future. And I can't wait to get back out on the bank. Um, but for now, tight lines in your own fishing. And I'll catch you all next week.